Thank you. So uh, my name is Kimari, Brian Kimari. I'm a research fellow with the Center for Human Rights and Policy Studies. Uh, so we conducted a study on the Kenya Youth Employment and Opportunities Project that largely was a project that was meant at increasing youth employability through both, uh, you know, training, skills training and uh, business support, which was through grants that were given for business development services and also for two young entrepreneurs. So the, the project was able to, uh, it's, it's now in its uh, seventh and final cycle, uh, which it's done uh, seven cycles so far. And what it's largely managed to do is expose a lot of young people to diverse skill areas, which were done, offered both by master craftsmen who were handling apprentices, as well as uh, through, formal, uh, through formal internship programs, uh, where some of the participants were, were posted through the training. So this has been, you know, kind of very impactful for some of these young people. And on the other side, they also were able to do quite a bit of grants that were given to youth who are entrepreneurs and youth who already have businesses and needed a little bit of business support. So, uh, you know, to understand violence, we also have to kind of start from the, from the starting point of the root causes of violence. And what studies have been able to find so far is that violence is influenced by a lot of social factors, by a lot of social factors that exist in society, largely uh, around the horizontal inequalities uh, facing different, uh, different people who choose to engage in violence. This you know, kind of ranges for, from the, the access to basic services, uh, you know, uh, basic services like security, like education, like health. So the role of, of some of these youth initiatives and youth programs uh, in preventing violence would largely be influenced by their capacity to kind of foster more social inclusion and to address some of the challenges that the youth are going through that kind of, uh, you know, pushes them to engage in, in, in both criminal and political violence. So what K KYEOP uh, uh, did in this regard was expose a lot of these young people to, uh, to services that they were able, that, the, that they initially did not have access to. From, from, the, from the study of the KYEOP, which, was in, uh, which we conducted in Kondele, Kisumu County, and in Kawangware, Nairobi County, some of the you know, best practices that we are getting from these sites is that, first of all, they had, the training program had a life skills component, which was, you know, which was, which was very key in uh, you know, kind of improving the self-confidence and impacting social skills upon some of these young people, as well as giving them the self-confidence or self-efficacy to really uh, be able to grab at these opportunities that the government is offering. So life skills was one, one big component. The next component is that they developed uh, skills uh, in core business skills and as well as entrepreneurship skills that enabled these people to have a sustainable source of income because they can use this skill set over time to access other job opportunities. And finally, it was also <coughs> Um, it was also uh, influential because of the social kind of integration that it enabled through the program. Some of these youth were able to get into leadership roles and to uh, kind of have a more participation in the, in the governance of their, of their institution, which is shown to be one of the factors that enable the reduction of violence. And additionally, because it addressed uh, kind of lifestyle concerns of, uh, and uh, helped address issues like poverty and unemployment, it did help to solve a lot of the challenges that might contribute to, to violence. Yes, I think the challenge that KOP has is shared by numerous other programs targeting youth, and it's just around that main point of targeting, how to target different youth, so both in, the t in terms of the access to information about the program, which is no is limited. A lot of the youth did not get access to, to information about the program and did not know it existed. A lot of the other, the other issue is that it did not target some of the youth who are likely to engage in violence. Uh, you know, uh, it, did not, it did not specifically target youth who are vulnerable and who need extra support, and that might be an issue. Also because the, product, the project had a randomized selection process, which while it's a positive that it is able to, uh, to kind of reach a majority of different youth and diverse groups of youth, it also did not consider the affirmative action 
agenda of, of policies such as this on youth and violence prevention. So one of the main challenges is that it, not, it was not able to enroll some of the youth who regularly engage in violence or who need that kind of support. Yeah, I think, I think perhaps, uh, you know, one of the major challenges around these issues is uh, tends to revolve around the, you know, the resources, the available resources to conduct such a project. I think one of the major issues for them was that they had a very high number of applicants, but very limited slots for some of these youth to access these opportunities. So that was, uh, you know, kind of a major uh, problem on their regard. Uh, yeah, that's just the lack of resources. So in a lot of these centres, youth, have, have, especially youth in poor neighbourhoods, have become accustomed to government programmes that come and go. So without really that long-term impact, it's an intervention, it's a small intervention that are usually short-term and are not typically able to, you know, to kind of transform the, life, the lives of these youth in an, impact, in an impactful way. And also additionally, you know, if we look into this youth employment, this youth uh, initiatives as one of the angles for preventing violence, one, one of the, or, or, or rather also for addressing uh, issues around social exclusion, the major problem will be that some of these projects tend to be divorced from the wider government development agenda that's, you know, kind of looking to benefit all Kenyans. So youth have kind of been put in a separate place and them being separated from the national development agenda and goals is becoming a, a little bit of a problem that you know doesn't allow these programs to really meet their objectives and that's to bring you know services closer to young people and also to increase resources available uh, and opportunities that can be grasped by young people who are in need.